This is Adobe Max 2025. I'm Mike Russell and I'm heading into Creative Park to find out some of the latest new innovations in AI from Adobe. One of the most powerful features from Adobe Max 2025, in my opinion, is object masking. I can select this and using AI, select me, which is really cool. And then I can track me. Look at this, how it perfectly follows me and my hand movements as I walk through the Max foyer. All right, now we can see this mask is fully tracked and it's done incredibly well. I'm actually gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer by holding down the Option key on my Mac and drop it up here. Next, I can actually right click on the mask and change this to an opacity mask. Now, why would I do that? Well, I can go ahead and select the text tool. Let's put 2025. There we go. Now you'll already see my hand is in front of that 2025. I can move it around to wherever I want and then play back some of the video and look at this. As I'm talking and walking and waving my hand, I'm actually covering that text. How cool is that? Now, actually, I quite like this frame, so I'm going to export it, and we'll use that a little bit later in the video. But I can actually drag on one of Premiere Pro's new transitions. Let's drag a wave onto me and watch as I glow it's an AI at the end. from Adobe. So as you can see, there's a lot to be excited about with the Object Mask tool in Premiere Pro. Now I want to hop into Firefly, and I spoke to Ashray on the floor at Max. He told me this. In Firefly video, you actually have an option to just toggle on transparent background. So now I can make a video with a transparent background. I can overlay on something I'm producing in Premiere. I'll just type into the prompt box, fireworks. Another thing that I really love is for people who don't know a lot of prompting, you can use our prompt enhancement tool. And I will click enhance prompt. And look at that, a spectacular firework display at night. I couldn't possibly write this prompt. Let's generate. And when I find one I like, I can go ahead and download. And now we can see we not only have the fireworks display, but we have the alpha version, which I can go ahead and pull into my project. But it didn't have sound effects. This is where I got a superb tip from Jojo, the product manager for Premiere Mobile. You all know if you edit video, how difficult it can be to find the exact right sound effect. Now, right here, you're going to see a music and audio button and generate sound effects. What we can do is you can perform the sound yourself. You'll see I've written fireworks there. <laughs> Okay, there it is. Let's generate. And here they are. Let's add this in. Then I'm going to head back to Adobe Firefly and create a board. I'll go ahead and drag in some of the inspiration here, and this will now hit on my board. Now I can use AI to its absolute limit, especially with my free generations inside Firefly. So I'm going to vary and say more like this. This will give me a ton of new ideas based on that image, and I'll go vary, and we'll say keep the style, and pop this over here. Now we won't wait for those to generate. We'll actually do more stuff that I've seen at Adobe Max over the last few days. Here I'm going to select this picture of me wearing some headphones, and I'm going to go into presets. If you don't know which of the many models to use and by the way I need to slow down because I'm going a bit too fast um, but you can actually see it's coming up with a ton of ideas of me some of them more scary than others all at a certain convention I can probably make something of these generations coming in let's go to presets now I can use it now I've slowed down and I can go for different scenes so I could go for a spooky scene and you'll also see that it's picked out the right model for the right job so we've got spooky scene uh, generated by Google's Nano Banana. You can create logos using Ideogram. There's the ability to use other models such as Flux to remove text and even Firefly to restyle. So as we see these little generations coming out here, very interesting variations, we can actually go ahead and maybe make a spooky scene. And I'm going to select me as the subject. So I just select subject and use the picker to add me as the subject. Let's generate and you'll see a generation comes. Now I can do this multiple times, maybe get four spooky scenes with me. Let's actually have a look at this and we can see me with some headphones looking rather spooky. Uh, there's also me here. Let's place this on the canvas. Uh, no idea what's going on there but it looks rather worrying. Same here, I can place this on the canvas. There I am looking into a spooky pond with a crescent-shaped moon there. Um, I far prefer the electric party. Let's get me there. <laughs> I gotta say that's actually a pretty funky electric party look. Here's another one. <laughs> Very nice indeed. And another one. This probably is the best generation yet. I love that and I love those shoes. And then there's this one of me just chilling out in an electric party mode. Let's roll the preset again. And this time maybe we'll go for ID8 logo. 
I'm definitely going to use this style because I love it. And I'll type in my name, Mike Russell, uh, for the logo generation. And using Ideogram right now, and let's roll this a few times, we can make a logo for my brand using the electric party version of me. And there's one, very nice indeed, using Ideogram's brilliant text to image and using the same inspiration from that shop. Even ChatGPT's image one is available there, so we can go isometric 3D. And yes, let's use that electric party version again and generate a few different versions of that. And this is really cool. Look at this. This is an isometric electric party version of me being created by the GPT Image 1 generator. I love it. And I love how much of the style it has actually managed to retain there. And there's the final generation. Really, really cool stuff. Firefly boards. I highly encourage you to check them out. Another really cool AI feature added to Photoshop is upscale. Take a look at the image size here. And if we look at the pixels, you'll see it's pretty small. And actually, if I zoom in, it's pretty grainy. Uh, ignore the embarrassing DJ down there. But if we go into image and we go to generative upscale, we can now actually use Topaz Gigapixel, uh, which is the best in class for upscaling. Also Topaz Bloom if we want to add creative details and Firefly even has its own upscaler. I'm gonna go to four times with face recovery ticked because there's a person in there and look at how huge it will make my really old photo. Click upscale. And look at that, that's crazy. Look at the amazing job that Topaz Gigapixel has done. And that is the grainy before. Look at that, that's insane. Grainy before and then clear, crisp after. We can go back, oh, that's the original tiny image and this is, this is just insane, look at that. The upscaling is incredible using AI. I can grab this one. This is me uh, completing a trail in Australia again 25 years ago. So it's a little bit grainy and a little bit small. That's never gonna win any awards for being a great photo. But I'll go back into image, generative upscale, and this time I'm gonna switch over to Topaz Bloom to maybe add some creative detail and I can get as creative as I want. Let's go really creative, crank the creativity up to 10 and we'll go to the scale four times again. So we'll get a nice big new photo with a creative upscale. Uh, warning here, it probably won't be me remaining in that image, but we'll see what Topaz Bloom does with this. <laughs> Look at that incredible upscaled photo. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a cleaner version of me with a different cap, uh, a different staff there, and <laughs> different details in the background. Let's look at the original. There's the original grainy version, and there's the creative upscale. Now, of course, I could just use the normal upscaler and get an exact replica of me, but this is pretty cool. Okay, finally, let's have a bit of fun by selecting the shirt on an image that I generated just a few days ago using the Adobe Firefly AI, that's perfect. And now I can do a generative fill. And of course I can drop down now and select from my models. Let's go for Nano Banana and we'll say a shirt covered with flowers. And I'll just make sure that's real flowers. And then we'll generate. And I've got to say that flowery shirt is actually looking pretty good. I can also maybe select up here somewhere in the sky and we can say uh, again inside Nano Banana. Once I've got this all selected, we'll just type in generative fill here and we'll say alien spaceship and let's play and let's place that in the sky. Yep, it's absolutely nailed it. We have an alien spaceship over the Hollywood Hills as I run in my flowery shirt, but I'm not liking this dusty track. Well, let's use the object select tool, just as we've seen before in Premiere. Now I can hover over any object here in my image. It's really cool. Just making sure here to subtract the bits that I don't want to change and focus only on the trail. And again, we'll go for generative fill and we'll say a paved running track. And we'll go ahead and generate. And there we go, not too bad. I'm running on a paved running track, not a dusty trail, in my flowery shirt, about to be abducted by aliens. One other creative twist here, maybe I want to use one of the many models available to me. Let's actually use the latest, Firefly Image 5, that launched at max 2025, and we'll say a running alien. We'll go ahead and generate. 
Now, after working hard with generative AI, I've got a running figurine that I like, a little alien that's maybe following me in the background here. I can place it on the running track. And do you know what? It actually doesn't look too bad out of the box. But now Photoshop has another feature, which is really cool. It's the Harmonize button. And what that basically does is merges the object you've just placed into the image so that it looks like it actually fits inside that image. And look at that, it's finished. I want you to look down here below the feet where there is indeed a shadow being cast on the running track as Photoshop has now harmonized my alien. And it's definitely on my tail here running around Hollywood Reservoir. So there you go, Adobe Max 2025. What a whirlwind, what a bunch of really cool announcements. And let me know what your favorite feature is in the comments down below. Throw a like, subscribe, as I'll be doing more videos just like this one.